here. Perfect. So today we are out at uh, Prochelle Farms near Trenton, Ohio, and they are seeding soybeans while using their homemade cover crop roller crimper. This is something they built a few years ago. Uh, they used a steel drum from a scrapyard and welded their own paddles on it. And they have it mounted on the front of their case tractor. And then behind the tractor, they're pulling their white planter. They're seeding soybeans today. And right now we're on site. Alex Prochelle is behind me out in this field somewhere in the really tall rye and making his rounds. And I just wanted to pause here for a second, take a look at the crimp job on the rye. So again, this is a homemade crimper, but if we see here, there's a snap point. Here's a snap point. It's getting a good kill. This is a, I believe this is their third or fourth year on this particular unit. Again, it is a home build, but it seems to work very well for them. And it's mounted on the front of their tractor. They have a front mount three point hitch that they've built and adapted a lot of a lot of shop time on this particular unit but it does get a good job this is just a cereal rye cover crop uh, to my knowledge they've not used it in any other type of cover crop uh, but what they're doing with the cereal rye is they're primarily using it for weed control so trying to get away from herbicide usage um, something else to note is that while we're out here today you'll notice in the surrounding fields on our drive out there wasn't any other tractors rolling so we've had some pretty significant rains within the last five days and the rye is out here soaking up some of that excess water of the several inches of rain that we've had and they're able to get out here one to two to three days earlier than other conventional fields that do not have a cover crop so let's take a look at Prochelle Farms and see what they're doing today. Okay guys, this is Alex and he's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, what modifications they've had to do to their planter. And then in a second here, we'll move on and talk about the roller. All right, we are running a uh, white Agco 5100. It's a older air planter. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple planter, easy to use, easy to run soybeans with. Um, we haven't done a whole lot as far as specializing it to run into our rye. Um, it is, we, uh, so what we do to have it run into this rye is we always keep good blades on it is probably about the most important thing is we don't run any no-till blades um, what we found that the no-till blades just keep it out of the ground uh, more than if you just had good opener blades on it is what we found um, on a 5100 white we don't have a good option for heavy down pressure springs on these planters is one of the downfalls of them they're rather light weight unit so what we opted to do is we took the insecticide boxes off of the rear and added these john deere uh, combine weights off of the old 6600 john deere um, we put two per row and we have found that that does a very effective job of slicing through the rye. Uh, occasional spots where it's really heavy, we will have some trouble with it still cutting the residue. But most of the time, it does a very good job at that. It's, uh, we're planting at about 140 population today. Um, we've played around going a little bit lower, but we're pretty comfortable at about a unit an acre. Um, Nothing special on the uh, markers. Uh, they seem to do just fine, smooth blade markers. They do gather some rye. You gotta, I don't know, about every time you fill up, you just pull some rye off of them. They don't seem to be doing too bad. 
So you're not running any any coulters, no road cleaners, anything like that, correct? Nope, nope. Uh, I have ran road cleaners before on a different planter, uh, shark tooth style. They did okay. They had some wrapping, depending on what you're doing. Um, but it, it does help maybe a hair to just push it out of the way a little bit. It might help in the heavier residue spots. But, I mean, without anything, it still does okay. Yeah, especially if you're going with um, with the rye, and that's the point of this unit here. Yeah, so even without any coulters or trash whippers, it's also sort of minimizing disturbance too. So if you, in theory, less disturbance, less weed pressure, that's the hope at least. Yep. yep. Here's a example of what these are a couple of their end rows here. You can see see where the, the row units on the planter went down between the rye, but again, there's, there's not a whole lot of soil exposed here. Now let's take a look at the roller crimper. And this is a front view of their roller crimper and uh, planting tractor unit and Alex is going to talk to us a little bit about that because this is this is something that you can't really buy commercially manufactured this is a little homebrew unit right here so we built this roller crimper about four years ago I want to say um, we've used it uh, a little bit since then uh, we haven't gone quite full scale with it yet. Uh, it, it works really good. It's about 15 and a half foot wide, about 16 overall. Uh, we had seen different examples. Uh, the main one built by the Rodale Institute was the main inspiration for these. Um, this is a flat paddle. Uh, we, I couldn't, since I had built this, I couldn't quite figure out how to do helical design of the Rodale Institute's version, although I think it's probably a, a very good design. Uh, in our home shop, we couldn't quite figure out how to do that. So I built this one with flat paddles. We offset paddles as much as we could to maximize pressure per paddle, to maximize the down pressure, and to have better crimping action. Um, not quite sure on the total weight of it. It is heavy. It's probably a little bit over 2,000 pounds total. We run it on a front wheel assist tractor. It, the front wheel assist really helps to push it around when you're on curves. Um, and definitely in this county, that is a must because we don't have square fields. Everything is curved, so we, we usually got to push it around a little bit. On a two wheel drive tractor, there's um, just not enough weight to push it because it, when you are on the ground all of the weight is on the ground there's no weight on the tractor to help you push it so the front wheel assist was a must for us it, and it it really helped it helped with maneuvering and made this job a whole lot easier we had it's of course a three-point configuration uh, we got a three-point hitch on the front here uh, we adapted to this tractor um, we can fill it with with water if we want to. Right now we actually have oil in it just to keep it from rusting out and we got good weight on it as it is. So is it completely full with oil or do you just have enough in there just to coat? Yeah, yeah we probably got six or seven gallons in there okay. of oil. Yeah, we have ran water in before. I didn't see a whole lot of difference. Um, it seems that the that when rye crimps good it's usually because of the growth of the rye how well it grows how tall it is and the density of it is where you get good crimping action not necessarily the direct weight of this i mean if i added 500 pounds to it i don't think it make much of a difference it's at a good weight already where it crimps good it crimps good and where it doesn't it doesn't uh, you, all right and this field is probably actually one of our worst examples in the past three years 
for uh, the crimping action. It got planned very late. It was into December by the time we got this field done. Um, so our best areas for crimping is usually the overlapped areas on the end rows you see at the best. Um, and then, of course, in our traditionally good spots in the field, they'll crimp bid there. But the late planning of it, I think, really hindered the growth of it. And it's a lot like wheat, of course. If you get it planted early, you get good tillering, you get good growth out of it. Um, sometimes I think we need to maybe even fertilize it a little bit to get a really good growthy plant. Because um, you, really, you really want a lot, of, a lot of biomass going down. And it really helps when you're when you have thin stands it just it's springy the rye gets really really spindly and just pops right back up and there's not really the amount of weight that you can do to put down on it except for maybe your tire tracks will put them down but that's that's about it so again when did you say this field was planted with rye uh we started end of november and did rain I think it was probably 13th or 14th of December by the time we got done everything did germinate good and we got growth everywhere and what is your planting method how are you seeding the rye so we're uh, usually right now we have an air box mounted to a vertical tillage tool and that we're putting it on with uh, last year before we got the air box mounted we had spread it with a just a spreader and vertical tilled it in and that worked pretty good. It got done a little bit earlier and it, it worked pretty good. I'm thinking if we get into a later season again, doing this next year, we'll probably move on to drilling it. I think if, it, if we drill it a little bit later, we'll probably get better growth than doing the vertical tillage tool and spreading it on top. I think we'll get better growth out of it for later season. So, Okay, thanks Alex. Again, this is uh, Alex Prochel with Prochel Farms and we're just outside of Trenton, Ohio today. And uh, we're going to let him get back to work here. <laughs>